Hello everyone, this is Ace Colpster here, and in this video, we're not only going to be cleaning out the dust of my computers, but also my PS3. So if you stay tuned, we will begin. Okay, before we actually get started, I'm going to do one quick thing. That's to run a program called Specky. It's completely free, and I'll have a link down in the description below if you're interested. And basically what that does, is that it shows you all the information of everything that's inside your computer, component-wise. And it also shows you the temperature of all the major components that are running at. So I'm going to do that for a comparison at the end of the video for before and after. So I'm going to go ahead and run Specky. Let it load a bit. Okay, the processor is running at 92 degrees. The motherboard is running at 97. The graphics is running at 137. And the hard drive is running at 101 degrees. Okay. Now that we got that information, we can go ahead and begin. Okay, we can now finally get started. I brought over all the stuff onto my workbench. So we got the two computers, the PlayStation 3, some cleaning products, and tools. Okay, so here are the things you're going to be needing when cleaning electronics and computers. Cans of air, paper towels you can also use, cotton swabs, cotton balls, or even wash rags, Windex, you can also use rubbing alcohol or warm soapy water. I prefer a Windex or rubbing alcohol since they both dry rather quickly. A Phillips screwdriver to open the computer cases. Something to cut open the plastic wrap on your cans of air. And this is optional. This is simply a twisty tie. You can also use cable ties. And this is to tie all the cables that are just dangling and just randomly all over the place inside your computer cases. And that's pretty much it. Okay, to any of you that are not familiar with cans of air or don't know how to use them, I'm going to go ahead and explain to you of what not to do and the dangers of it and what to do and how to use it properly. So I'm going to go ahead and read you of what not to do. Never shake or tilt can before usage. Use an upright position only. Never use near a potential ignition source. Never spray into an enclosed space, such as a trash can or paper shredder. Never use on camera mirrors. Avoid skin contact with product in liquid form may cause frostbite. Avoid contact with product in liquid form may cause plastic to discolor. Now, do not inhale it. Don't be squirting it in people's faces, including yours along with animals because it's not only just air but it also has chemicals inside that will harm you. Okay now on how to use it remove safety tab on nozzle which is right here you just pull this right off and you're able to squirt the air. Do not shake keep can upright meaning don't shake the can don't tilt it side the side upside down because the can will get really cold and you'll just get the moisture that's inside the can and it'll squirt out and it'll damage any of your electronics that you're working on or unless you're squirting it on like a table or something then you're just fine but don't be squirting it on electronics clear nozzle by pointing toward open area and pulling trigger quickly three times meaning once you have the tab off, you squirt it three times quickly, and then you're done, you just clear out the nozzle. Hold nozzle three to four inches away from object. Pull trigger in series of short two to three second blasts, so that way you get a nice good pressure of blasts of air. A proper pressurized blast will be invisible when dispensed from the nozzle. A visible white blast means the product is dispensed improperly. And six is just says clean away. 
and that is all that there is to it. This pack of three medium sized cans of air I got for $12 at Walmart. They also come in small and large and if you don't want them to get them in packs you can also get them in singles as well. You can get them pretty much anywhere that sells electronics even online. As you take notice they have straws attached to the sides and what you can do is stick that into the nozzle and what the straw does is that it gives it a direct flow to the area for a better most effective result. You don't have to use it just for electronics you can use that for many other things like inside your car your workshop depending on what you do like wood cutting something where you don't have to get your compressor out and having to hook it up and go through all that hassle just to have a quick burst of air. Okay I'm going to start with my PlayStation 3 Yours may be a little different or different than mine. I'm going to go ahead and point out the main parts that are clogged with dirt and dust. And the first one's right there in front of you, where the buttons are, along with where you insert and eject the game. If you look underneath that, the hard drive bay, the USB ports, underneath where the air intakes goes in at. This is all filled with dirt and dust, along with the sides here. And if you flip it around to the back, the ports and the outtake where the air gets pushed out of that, that's all filled with dust and dirt. Now every time that I play this, lately it's been overheating pretty fast, and it also gets fairly noisy as well so it's a good thing that you want to keep this nice and clean as much as possible okay I'm gonna go ahead and start cleaning the PS3 pull off the tab there we go give it a few bursts there we go now we can start cleaning As you can see, it's all nice and clean now. Now all that's left to do is wipe it down with Windex. So let's get my paper towels. Fold it up. Now you don't need to drench it or soak it. You just need a few squirts. Wipe it down really good. Get all the fingerprints and excess dust and dirt that's on there. It may have laid on there when you're blowing the dust and dirt around. sides back and underneath here make 
And there you have it. A nice, clean PlayStation 3 now. Okay, now to my first computer. Now before you mess around with either your computer, your grandma's computer, your friend's computer, regardless whose computer it is, make sure you're not going to void the warranty. And that warranty will be a sticker on the back alongside here somewhere. And if you break that warranty sticker, then you are not going to be able to send it back to get a replacement if you accidentally break your computer. Now all computers that you buy from the store will have a warranty sticker. Unless you buy and build your own, then it won't have a warranty sticker. But if that's all well and good that your warranty has run out or you don't really care about it, then you can proceed. Now as you can see, it's fairly clean on the outside because I hardly use this computer. It's a little dusty in where the CD is, CD-ROM drive. A little dusty where the air vents are. A little dusty, dirty on the back. But I'm not going to show you my other side because that's where my Windows CD key is. So I'm going to go ahead start with the front. CD-ROM. Top. Side. Now this is where your Phillips screwdriver is going to come in handy. There's going to be a screw or two screws attached to the right side of this panel. And you unscrew them, take this panel off, see now it's off. Set that to the side. Now you can see the insides of your computer. See it's fairly dusty in there. Not as bad as my other one. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this out. This is where the cotton swabs and the cotton balls are going to come in handy as well because you can get on the fans or anywhere that there's loose dirt. Make sure you don't drench or soak the motherboard or anything else like that. Never open the power supply. So we'll go ahead and clean out the computer. Also make sure you don't want to spin the fans too fast because they're, they're supposed to be uh, going at a certain speed. So if they go over that speed, then you might damage them. As you can see, a lot of dust coming out. Especially where the processor is. The heat sink. Focus on the power supply and the heat sink. Ooh, this can's getting pretty cold. What you can also do is take off the other side here if you can in this case I can't but if you can on yours you can pull these tabs and the front will come off very carefully pull that away because there's wires attached to the front and you can spray in between here because there will be dirt I'm sure caught inside so
pretty good. And I'll do for now for this computer. Now on to the next. Now on to my second computer, the one I use the most. Now this one has a little bit more than the other one did. Now I'm going to go ahead, before anything, take off the side so you don't see my CD key. Okay, so pretty much the same thing as the other computer. Let's go ahead and clean. CD-ROM drive. Here's the inside. As you can see, it's a lot worse than the other computer. And it, this fan and the back of the power supply are a little clean because on my last video, I kind of demonstrated on how to clean computers. The can is getting nice cold, as you can see, it's all frosted up now. So I'm going to be back with another can. So wait a second. Okay, now I have my second can all ready to go. Now I can start again. Also, I recommend you do this outdoors because if you or anyone else has allergies or asthma, it's very, very wise to do this outside. Now the back. The back is pretty dirty as well. Now if you're using cans of air, I recommend you wait at least 5-10 minutes before you start the computer back up because if any moisture got inside the computer, if you turn it on, it might damage the computer. There you go. Now it's all clean. Now the last two steps for this process before we're all done is putting on your side panels again, screwing them in place. 
get more paper towels, a little Windex, or whatever you're using to clean them with. You're wiping them down. And there you have it. Clean computers once again. Here's all that dust that came out of everything that I've just cleaned. Okay, now that everything's all set up, as you can see, the only difference is that everything's all clean now. Now we're going to be turning on a computer and seeing if there's any difference. Okay, I'm now turning on my computer. Here's the paper that we wrote everything down on. Now I'm going to type in my password. Let everything load up here first. And now I run Specky. So the processor was at 92 degrees before, now it's at 83, 85, 77, 75, 72, 75, so between 70 and 80. The motherboard was at 97, now it's at 85. The graphics, I'm not going to expect too much of a change because graphics cards get pretty hot especially in heavy use. It was at 137 before, now it's at 105. And the hard drive is at 78, and before it was at 101 degrees. And there you have it. Big difference. So make sure you clean out your computers, and you won't have that kind of problem. And that is it for my video. I thank you guys for taking the time to watch my video. I hope you found it useful. Please don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And please, if you do have any questions, feel free to leave any down in the comments below or in the private messaging, however you feel. I'm here to help, so please don't hesitate. I'll talk to you guys later. Take care. Bye.